hello everybody again thank you very much for joining us at beyond kicking and punching with myself Sunny Pabuaya and Sifu Aldacascos I'm so excited about this interview where Sifu Al is doing it live in Salt Lake City this individual or I should say this lady you know even though my wife knows it was before her right I've watched her in movies as well as you know shows gotta love a woman who can kick butt and that's why myself personally I had the biggest crush on her so again folks if you haven't had a chance yet make sure you sub subscribe to our channel hit that bell icon all right give us a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments feel free to write it in the comment box also if you want us to interview certain people write it in the comment box let us know okay so now without further ado Sifu Al is live in Salt Lake City with Karen Shepherd. The floor is yours, Sifu. Thank you. Okay. On this episode, we have Karen Shepherd. Some of you have heard her name, and matter of fact, many of you have. She's been in a lot of movies, and I'm really excited because not only is she an actress, uh, a stunt actress, uh, and um, martial arts star, she's also one of our favorite students okay she's been with us for eons all right uh, i'm not gonna say eons but, right, right that's true right but you see the <laughs> thing is there's a bond there uh, so we understand on what we are talking about and i i've seen her grow from a student that came out of eugene oregon you know where where we were and I, I'm growing up into Portland, Oregon, and then really just maturing into where she is. But remember this, you know, I've always said this, nothing big starts from uh, uh, big. It always starts from something small. And from that small, she began to grow up and really expand and became national champions in forms and weapons. And she did excellent when, when getting into the martial arts uh genre in the films but you know this is something that i want to ask karen i'm going to be shooting back and forth and all of that yeah how did you get involved with the films <laughs> well um i was at a tournament it was uh, going to be my final tournament halfway through uh, just into 1981 as a matter of fact um and i got a phone call from tadashi yamashita um, who asked me, invited me to be in a film called The Shinobi Ninja, Ninja. and we shot that in Japan. Uh, at the time, because I was rated number one, I was the first woman to be rated, uh, something that I fought to help establish for women. Uh, women didn't have divisions often. Mm -hmm. Women uh, weren't rated. And so I made it my mission to uh, go to uh, Karate Illustrated magazine. Renardo Barden at the time was the editor. And at the time, there was only one rating system. Now there's quite a few, but back then, there was only one uh, for the national tournament circuit, the A and AA rating. And um, oftentimes, I was the only woman competing with men. And I was rated in the top 10. And women would come up to me and say, you know, we really would like to compete in forms. We really want to do that, but you know, we don't want to compete with men. It's like, why? And that kind of resonated. And I thought, you know, maybe if women had a goal to work for, more women would compete. Um, at the time, only 10% of martial artists were women. Now it's like 50 50, right? But so I, I approached the editor. Uh, I was very bold. I was a kid. I was <laughs> really uh, think about how I did that, and it, it still kind of amazes me. It was, I guess, a calling. Um, well, Mr. Barden said, had a meeting with him, and he said, "Well, if you could convince tournament promoters to have divisions for women, 
And if you can get all the top women in the country to sign a petition saying they'd like a division, then we'll see what we can do. So I just, I was bold and I, I approached people like Joe Corley and uh, at the Battle of Atlanta and uh, John Cork or uh, Larry Carnahan and Ted Kresge at the U.S. Open. And, well, they were willing to make the divisions, um, got the petition signed by the other female competitors and made it happen. And so 1979 was the first year uh, that women were rated and I was number one and I held that title for 80. And then I handed the baton over um, to someone else halfway through 81 because Tadashi of Mashida called me and asked me to come do the film. And uh, I knew Eric Lee was in it. And of course, Eric, Eric and uh, Malia were my inspiration to get into forums. Oh, that's a whole other story. I mean, you asked me one question here and I'm going off on no, th my whole good. history. That's good. That's good. Um, so that's how I got started. And I was laying there, it was in Japan and it was in the mountains and there was like 10 feet of snow and I was freezing and they couldn't afford doubles, you know, um, set doubles, uh, stand-ins is the word I'm looking for. So I had to lay there while they changed the cameras and the lighting and everything in the snow in this position with like I had an arrow in my arm for like 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, but I loved it. I loved it. I just, I felt like, wow, you know, this is what I want to do. I just felt so natural. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't, it was just a joy. So I packed up and I moved to LA. Um, what was the, um, I've seen you in a lot of uh, movies and you know, doing stunts and fighting it. Which, which and who was your greatest fight with in, in movies? Man, I've had so many really good fights. There are some really great fights on, um, uh, I, I would say probably the classic one is uh, Writing Wrongs with Cynthia Rothrock. Uh, that's the feedback I get from a lot of people that kind of stands the test of time as one of the best fights between two women, and I, I think it is. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Who, who choreographed that? That was, oh gosh, um, you know, the, they had a whole stunt team, the director, Corey Yuen. Where was it done? Hong Kong. Oh, Hong Kong. Yeah, um, Corey Yuen was the director, mm -hmm. and the, uh, he also choreographed, but they had uh, stunt teams. I got to meet Jackie Chan during that trip, which is really cool. Mm -hmm and see how they operate, which is totally different from uh, making a film in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. They film like three movies at a time mm -hmm. and their stunt guys, you know, they're, they all, uh, I, I, I mean at a time, like in a, the same day, they don't sleep. Like they have three movies going, like their lunch break, they sleep, mm -hmm. they don't eat. <laughs> you know, they eat as they're working and then they're on to the next movie and they shoot nights. Mm -hmm. on another movie I and mean, they just worked so incredibly fast um so it's kind of a team a team effort for choreography they kind of as soon as i i showed up they wanted to see me move so i you know i did a form i did a couple of katas and they got a feel for my style so mm -hmm. that the stuntmen could kind of grasp that style and choreograph around how I mm -hmm. move and that was really fascinating. Mm. You know guys, we got so much to talk about and a lot of interviews that are going to be coming. You know? If you like what we're doing, subscribe below. Okay, Put the thumb up and ring the bell. All right? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Karen Shepard, Karen Shepard. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Now, <laughs> Questions on this, right? <laughs> How old were you when you started the martial arts? Oh my goodness. I mean, don't, don't be bashful. Okay? Yeah. I mean, all right, I mean, okay. <laughs> don't be bashful. Um, that's a very well kept secret. Okay. That is a very Alrighty. guarded, guarded secret. <laughs> I will say I was in high school. Right. Yes. Right. And my dad did not 
really want me to take martial arts. Uh, my No, girls didn't do that back then. Something women didn't do. So I had to sneak off and uh, it was Shotokan. And I offered to clean the school for classes. Mm. And I took a little bit of Shotokan before I found Kajikenpo. Mm. So, yeah, and then uh, made my way to Wahanku Do. You heard that, guys, right? Kaju Kenbo, which leads us into the International Kaju Kenbo Association dash IKA dot com. So excited about what we're doing that it's going to come up with a lot of things. I mean, we've got a lot of talented people. And, you know, the thing that I want to go back into it is just that. When you get into the martial arts, guys, you know, it just don't stop there because martial arts is only a, a springboard to something greater. I mean, you can be a, a stunt coordinator, an actress, an actor, uh, a school owner. Uh, you can you can get into acupuncture and uh, yoga and and uh, master cane man. You can do so much things, you know beginning with the martial arts though so don't look at the martial arts as just being martial arts um, i'm going to say this that for us all of us in the martial arts martial arts is like medical insurance something you want to have and hope that you never have to use okay first thing is just that you are developing yourself your self-confidence your self-esteem and what has happened with the self-confidence and self-esteem look at that Success comes because you place yourself up high, but you also have to pay the price, and which I'm going to ask you for that, mm -hmm. because I know that you went through some injuries, right? You want to talk about that? Yeah, mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be martial arts movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? No, you, you got to pay you know, the price. Yes and no. Yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, it, it's a dangerous, yes, it's a it dangerous is. thing, and I, I have incurred quite a few injuries. Have had many surgeries, orthopedic. Um, it just kind of comes with the territory. And what can I say? <laughs> yeah. Now, are you doing any kind of seminars or classes or or things? They say are. Are you involved with that now? And yeah, I do. I I I do a lot of motivational speaking. Um, I do a lot of seminars about uh, fight choreography because that is a whole art into mm -hmm. itself, unto itself. It is uh, nothing like you learn in the dojo, the kun. You, um, it's a completely different art. When I first got into film, uh, I think I somebody approached me about doing a film overseas, and they wanted to see how I moved and. I said, oh, that's very pretty and very nice, but you just don't have enough power. It's not the kind of explosive power, you know, we're looking for. So that's something I really had to learn. And uh, quite fortunately, I had the right people to work with. And um, it is a very interesting art because fighting for the camera is, like I said, nothing like what you train for. You know, you train your basics so that you look really good. You know, you mm -hmm. train your kicks, your punches, you know, you train how to move, but uh, learning how to fight, you know, for camera angles, for, the, you know, the best effect and um, to make it look real. A lot of times, you know, it is. And it, that's why you get injured because sometimes you have to make contact. Mm. There's just no getting around it. Um, so you're teaching a stunt work also, right? So it's like um, well, it's inspirational I, things like that? Yeah, I teach uh, people who are interested in getting into the film uh, work, stunt work, or, you know, becoming martial arts actors. Good. Um, how? How do they get in touch with you? Well, anybody can contact me on Facebook, mm -hmm. Karen Shepard, but spell my name right. It's S-H-E-P-E-R-D, just like it sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Twitter at Real Karen Shep, Real K Shep, and Telegram at Real K Shep. Mm -hmm. and that's the best way. So I hope that you'll be able to join the uh, Kaju Kembo University and put something together because we want to get, I mean, that's exciting to have somebody that can be inspirational and inspirational and 
show uh, how to succeed in the martial arts. So when people want to get in touch with you now, they can get in touch with what the, your Twitter and Facebook. Most people send me messages, private messages on Facebook. Facebook. You're great. And again, yeah. we get back to the IKA. And don't forget that I also got a book called Legacy, which is on Amazon.com, but there's a little poster on it. And you're going to see a lot of pictures of, of Karen Shepard also. Um, because I know she's got to send me some of the things of which we're going to be putting on so you can actually see the talent that she has. I mean, extreme talent. And I tell you, beautiful lady. And when she comes across on the screen and also, yeah, she was showing me this, this a little a postcard she, she did about uh, uh, a movie called Hercules, something like that. And it was rated really high. Do you want to tell us about that? Oh, that was a television show. It's a TV show. series called Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. And uh, I starred as a character called The Enforcer, um, which actually was probably one of my most favorite jobs because the producer, uh, Robert Tappert, was a martial arts, is a martial arts fan, a mm -hmm. movie fan. And he had seen me in uh, Writing Wrongs and a couple of other of my action films that I have done. Uh, Eliminator Woman uh, was one of his other favorites. Um, and I did not know, but I thought I was going on an audition at, at Universal Studios. And my manager said, yeah, you have to go. You know, there's this Hercules show. Uh, they want to see you. So I thought I was going for an audition. And I walk into the room and the whole cat, the whole crew is sitting there, the director, the producer, associate producers, uh, the entire crew. And I'm like, well, this is different. <laughs> and there were no sides. And I sat right down and they were all like, just so friendly. And the producer turns to me and he says, so, so did you read the script? And I said, yes. Uh, what scene do you want me to do? He goes, no, no. He said, um, I just want to know how you're going to feel about coming out of the ocean nude in New Zealand. <laughs> and I said, um, well, I assume that it'll be a very private shoot. <laughs> he was very, very nice. I'm not, I wasn't really totally nude, but you'd have to see the episode to see what I'm talking about. They did a, an amazing camera shot where it uh, panned around my body 360 degrees and wound all around like my stomach, my back, and then it landed, boom, on my face. And I opened my eyes and I had these black contacts. Um, so anyway, he asked me that question and I realized that I already had the part and I didn't know, but he had it written for me, wow. which was, <laughs> that hardly ever happens. And uh, it was a really amazing experience. And the episode did so well it was it ended up being the highest rated episode ever for the entire series and they invited me back for a second um uh a second episode and um i actually contributed my husband and i as a, as writers and rewrote the ending to my character so that was kind of nice because that awesome. producer was so open-minded and um you know, that he took ideas from anybody, no matter if they were good for the project. Mm -hmm. And this is a great lesson in life mm -hmm. for anyone. Um, if something comes to you that works, you know, be willing to accept it and not have an ego about where it comes from. Because in Hollywood, you know, it's usually the opposite. You know, the, the egos are just completely out of control. But when you, you run into someone like that, that's a real gem. Hmm. So, it's been really a pleasure talking to you, but give me some, something inspirational for those guys. What, what, what would you say to, 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 uh, to get them inspired to, to do what you're doing? Because I, I also want to know that, mm -hmm. what, say, you, you've had this run into the film industry and everything, you know? Is there life for you afterwards? <laughs> there definitely is. Okay. There's definitely life for me afterwards, and I'm, I'm finding it now. I, it, it's, I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of stepping back, and some really great things are happening. Um, the only thing that I can really say right now is I am focusing on pulling everything together, right? 
we learned body, mind, and spirit, our trinity, um, and Kajukempo, our symbol. Um, and I, through all my years of training, and I've always, okay, I got the body part, uh, I got the mind part, but what does the spirit part really mean? No one ever, we never really talked about it. It was like, be a good person, you know, do the right thing, um, be positive. I get that. Um, but I'm now coming into helping other people develop the spirit part of that trinity. And um, hoping I'm being a, a good influence. And this is something I'm really, I'm working on myself as well as inspiring others to really think about what that means to them in the martial arts, especially children, especially the young children that are getting into martial arts. That part cannot be left out. And it's our duty and our responsibility to make sure that the spirit portion of body, mind, spirit in the martial arts is as full as the physical and the mind. Now, I get it, okay, because I, I sense something, okay? Uh, Kaju Campbell's history and and uh, theology on it is God first, you know? And when you talk about the trilogy, I understand exactly what you're talking about, you see? Building up the respect, respect here, respect there, and love within, within the yeah. community over there. And that inspires me. I see that that's inspirational to you too, because coming out this way, you you are giving of yourself. You are inspiring people, and you can only do that but by love. I mean, I see people that that they have followers that follow them, but they follow because of fear. But now you are trying to inspire them with love and remembering that there is somebody up there. This is actually keeping tab on us. Right. And all of the lessons we've learned from the injuries to the success and failures is only making you better. But I've seen you grow. Okay? I've seen you go up and down and up and go. You know? mm -hmm. And I tell you, man, that's fantastic. I mean, the greatest teacher you can have is the guy up there. That's right. All we're doing <laughs> is just being his puppet, so to speak. Slapping us and tell, get it straight, man. Okay, right. no matter how what much you screw up, you're still gonna get it straight because if you have that respect, love, discipline, uh, self confidence in yourself, you're gonna be able to inspire people, and you are very inspirational, and you can do it. Keep on going, Karen. Thank Keep you. on going. Okay? Thank you. So Thank well. you for joining us today. But don't forget now, Karen Shepherd, Twitter. Facebook, International Kaju Campbell Association, IKA.com, and get my book. And if you have any books, I'm working on it. All right, there you go. There you go. You see the thing? A lot of inspiration is coming, guys. Hang on. See you later. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much, Susan. Love you guys all. Bye -bye. Hi. Wow. That was a great interview, Sifu Al and Karen Shepard. It was such an honor having you on our podcast, Beyond Kicking and Punching, which I myself have learned a lot more things about you. And we really appreciate you, you know, doing this interview. One thing that I really got was when it comes down to it, folks, right? Never give up. Never let anybody tell you you can't do it because you know why? You can do it. You can. Like Sifu Al has always told me, as well as my mom, believe in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, use our belief in you that you can be better than what you are now. So again, make sure, if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, okay? So hit that notification so that this way you get notified. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. It's really up to you because you know, that's a choice we can all make, all right? And we like honesty. So if you didn't like it, 
let us know or either that how about you give us suggestions on how maybe we can better this podcast that's something you can do so write it in the comment let us know and we'll take it from there also remember that Sifu Al de Cascos has his book Legacy on sale on Amazon.com and we also have the Kajukempo-Ika.com where he has the new IKA Association which is very exciting because we're going to be interviewing Sifu Al talking about it a little bit more soon. So again, thank you very much Sifu Al. Really appreciate you doing all this again for everybody because, you know, we're all learning and... Thank you, Karen, for also sharing your knowledge, your experience. I mean, it's awesome. Also, my wife says hello to her uh, soul sister. So again, thank you very much. And let's keep up the work, folks. And make sure you keep training, keep working, believe in yourself, and just do it. Aloha. Welcome, welcome to Beyond Kicking and Punching. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Karen Shepard. Now, some of you have heard his name, heard her name. So, let's start. Cut. <laughs> 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 <laughs>